This is Ben Landisman with Lawson Screen and Digital Products. This is Deborah Sexton. This is Peter Walsh with m and Scott Ritter with the Decorated Apparel Expo. And you are listening to Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. A gift to the industry. All right. Well, welcome to the show. It is Friday, May 29th, 2020. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at OurSuccessGroup.com. Uh, today, Terry, we're going to be talking niche markets during and after COVID-19. Uh, plus, we're going to have Tom Rowan on from Shirt Lab joining us to talk about the up- upcoming Shirt Lab Summit. Uh, right. One quick note that I want to get in right here on the top. My uh, oldest son, Keegan, is turning 21 today. So oh my uh, happy birthday oh, to Keegan. Yeah, yeah happy I know. birthday, Keegan. <laughs> How's that, that possible, man? I know. <laughs> you were yeah. around when uh, I think, you know, he, he was pretty little guy when you met him for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Well, he's one year older than Riley, and I guess she's turning 20 next month. So that that's starting to make a little more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It just doesn't seem possible, though. So uh, happy oh, birthday, yeah. Keegan. Love you, buddy. And uh, looking forward to uh, talking to you a little bit later today. Fantastic. Um, all right. Well, we got some folks checking in with us and ter- terry since i came running in so hot i didn't have a chance to put my new mic flag on so i'm just you gonna- have a new mic flag yeah see there we go wow look at that yeah. I-, I need to i need to clean it up a little bit but i was trying some things last night so uh yeah there we go which is better than trying right before we go on the air which is yeah. what we so i could do. totally just you know I- make a lot of crazy sounds i'm like it's not gonna work with one of those but no it's not it's not it's pretty, <laughs> it is pretty um you know what, though? I know somebody that could actually put a whole bunch of like rhinestones and crystals all over that. So you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, I, I'm not really sh- sure if uh, Kim couldn't do that for you. I, I bet she could. But would she? That's a good question. She's yeah. watching right now. So we'll see. We'll find out. We'll find from out from the other room. So <laughs> <laughs> indeed. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Christine is checking in. Good morning to you. And uh, Tanya, good morning to you. And Martha. And Rena and Todd, good morning, everybody. And and uh, Eric, thank you so much for. Uh, I don't have to do anything with my hands today, so uh, hopefully I'll do much better than <laughs> weeks and, past. And as you said, you came in hot, man. You were you were a good two minutes before we went on the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still got a little sweat from running up the stairs. It's it's going to be a warm one here in St. Louis today for for us. You know, not not what year warm is, Terry. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're projecting 111 today here in Phoenix. Ah, so. Okay, well, 80 <laughs> here, but it's a. Uh, it's 80 with about 90% humidity. So, right. <laughs> uh, Charles, thank you for checking in and, and thanks for the happy birthday wishes. Uh, looking forward to seeing seeing everybody tonight at the party. So why don't we start there with news, Terry? Uh, uh, we, we've got our bi-weekly. Yeah, bi-weekly. That's right. <laughs> we've got our bi-weekly decorators community uh, virtual cocktail party happening. Right. So uh, this, uh, this particular set up this virtual happy hour kind of thing seems to be uh, uh, making its way around the industry. I keep seeing all sorts of emails for different people that are going doing their own virtual cocktail parties right, different times. Right. So um, I saw one from SGIA today. So yeah, so it's a lot of fun <laughs> as, as you can tell, because everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. Um, so and make I sure think that all the people have attended our event at some point in time. So. <laughs> correct. Correct. I, I agree. So uh, if you just want to head over to two regular guys.com forward slash party. And uh, there we go. T- Eric's got it in the comments for us. You can check it out and see us tonight at, uh, let's see, five o'clock your time, Terry, over there on the Pacific or Arizona, whatever time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, six o'clock mountain and seven o'clock here in the central time zone and eight o'clock over on the eastern time zone is when we will be kicking that off. Terry, I hear there may be a margarita machine being broken out potentially. I, I, I do from Christmas a couple of years ago. Uh, my son, Mike, bought me a margarita maker, an official margarita maker from Margaritaville. And, you know, you put a little uh, little bit of alcohol in it. You put some margarita mix. You put the ice in the back and it uh, you flip the switch and maybe they're pretty awesome. So, yeah, we're going to fire that up tonight. And uh, and also we're going to be uh, having some Hawaiian barbecue from down the street. And we want to encourage everybody, buy something local, buy some appetizers, buy some dinner to have at the event, maybe order pizza from somebody local. 
you know, uh, we've got to support all these businesses out here. And, mm -hmm. and so we encourage everybody at all these parties to, to go out and get something local and have it there at the party and, and talk to us about it a little bit and uh, BYOB of course. And, and Hey, uh, tell your friends, we'd love to have a huge turnout tonight for this event. And, uh, you know, tell your friends, it's a lot of fun. You can stay for an hour. You can stay for a couple hours. Uh, we usually yeah. hang around for a little while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we always say, oh, we're going to go like seven or 10 and then it ends up being midnight, one or two or whatever. <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. You know, I mean, obviously everybody kind of comes and goes as, as they please. And so even if, you know, you you go, oh, shoot, I, I missed it. You probably didn't. So just still come to the same place. Oh, yeah. With, I'm sure somebody will be there. Yeah, I think I had uh, who was I can't remember who it was last time. Um, I was actually messaging with them on Facebook and like, oh, man, I'm so sorry I missed it. I'm like, we're still doing it. And then they yeah. showed up and had a come great time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and you see. know, it's it's just it's very casual. We do talk a little bit about the industry. And uh, I, I know a couple of uh, events ago, a couple of different people were talking about uh, getting stimulus money from the government for their businesses, things like that, so, which I thought was super interesting uh, since I'm not in that end of it to, in, anymore that uh, to hear what they were going through and, you know, where one got money super quick and the other had done all these applications, hadn't got any. Um, it was really interesting conversation. And of course, you know, it's it's a lot of a lot of industry chit chat as well. Something that we would all be doing um, at a at a trade show right now after hours in the hotel bar sitting in uh, where where this show was born, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Over no, eight years it. ago. Yeah, exactly. And that I think that's the fun of it is that there are lots of great conversations happening, uh, you know, beyond just having fun. You know, there, there's I mean, yeah, I've learned so much. And, uh, you know, we've had just everybody brings a, a really unique perspective and it's awesome. You know, so, it, you know, everybody is invited to participate and add to the conversation. It's been it's been fantastic. I, I, I well, just and, have had a blast. Yeah. You know, Aaron, the, the conversation when people started talking about printing on face masks, and and what about the adhesive you you hold it down with and 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 what about the inks breathing through the inks and I thought wow this is really a conversation that people need to have yeah. and uh, and it was it's just kind of a spontaneous thing and a lot of people had uh, had had comments about it my favorite was Lon Winters where he said uh, he said oh so you don't want that spray adhesive on your uh, on your uh, face mask uh, how'd you put that shirt on put it over your head <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you put your shirts on somehow differently than you put it yes that's that's pretty funny um <laughs> good point uh yeah and i also learned that uh you know dairy queen uh is having a dilly bar shortage potentially that, and we so, also learned that <laughs> yes indeed so that uh prompted some uh Hoarding on my part. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Every store only gets so many dilly bars. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So anyhow, it's it's a blast. And we invite all you guys to show up again to regularguys.com forward slash party. Uh, a couple more comments here from a little bit earlier up. Eric uh, Todd said, uh, it's a dry heat. Dumbest thing ever. It's just hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Here's what we, here, here's the phrase, Todd. It's a dry heat until it's 115. Then it's just hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. And uh, Cindy said, good morning, y'all. High 90s here. No humidity here. Whose birthday? Uh, Cindy, it's my oldest son, Keegan's birthday. Today, he's 21 today. So uh, th thanks, for, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, let's see here. Christine, we had that kind of weather, weather earlier this week, 89 on a Monday and Tuesday with like 80% humidity. So awful. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, I'm, even though the, most of the stuff is open now, I'm pretty much still sheltering in place. So <laughs> uh, I, I came up to the uh, office here today, but uh, I probably won't leave this little room all day. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. all right, let's see what else we got here. And, um, Tony asked, are y'all going to be at the Dallas ISS show? Um, I think at the Fort Worth ISS show. It's, it's, only... it's yeah, it's Fort Worth ISS. It's still, it's still on the schedule uh, for the 28th through 30th of August, August 28th through 30th. So, uh, but uh, Tony, here's the deal. Everything is, uh, is in limbo. So uh, I have another show cancellation to announce here in just a minute. And uh they're kind of coming in hard and heavy. The, the issue really is uh, if the states will allow it, you know, you've got California, you got New Jersey, even Texas, you know, uh, some of us were at the Irving show in, uh, in Texas here just a couple of months ago. And after day one, you know, we're all getting texts at midnight saying, Hey, the show's canceled there. We have to be out by one o'clock tomorrow. They're opening the hall at 7am. You have to have a truck here by one. 
or they're going to ship your stuff out for you. And, and so, and that was, and that wasn't the state of Texas. That was Dallas County said that you couldn't have a gathering of more than, I believe it was 250 people. And yeah. so they shut us down at midnight after day one of the show. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of, it's not only are we dealing with state laws, but we're dealing with these communities and, and most of these trade shows are in very large cities. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're, uh, we're taking it day by day. Yeah. So if, if, uh, Fort Worth, ISS Fort Worth happens, you will be there though. I'm assuming I will Jerry. be there. I will be doing a seminar, 10 things you need to know about DTG printing on, cool. uh, Friday the 28th at one o'clock. All right. Well, formerly uh, the day before at nine o'clock, formerly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's changing, changing, changing. Good. Well, and, and I don't know, I, I, right now I'm not planning on, on being there. Um, the only show that I'm actually planning on being at the rest of this year for sure. Well, two, two shows I'm planning at being at the rest of the year would be uh, if Dex Chicago happens, we'll be there. We've got a, a decorators community booth there. And then, uh, Terry and I have been invited to uh, broadcast live from the uh, apparel zone at the uh, Printing United show in Atlanta this year. So, um, and and I'm I uh, sorry, there is one other event. I apologize, Cheryl, for missing it. Uh, the Sublimation Summit happening in in September in Atlanta. Uh, I am teaching uh, seminars there as well. So, uh, all right, let's let's get the other news because we got a lot of stuff to get to today. I'm I'm can almost guarantee we'll be in uh, bonus time. Uh, real quick, I wanted to share one other thing. I'm just super proud that we, uh, we all the work that we've done, Terry, uh, on this show uh, that uh, I've been trying for several years to get on iHeartRadio.com. And we are now an official podcast on iHeartRadio.com. So uh, if, uh, if that's, that's something that you darn use, exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool that we've uh, finally got that. So you can get iHeartRadio app and, and listen that way and, and check that out. Um, love it if you guys would head over there and uh, post a review on there. So they, they know they made a good decision to uh, bring us into the podcast world over there. Now, we did not get the Joe Rogan like... Um, <laughs> we didn't, I just assume we get those millions of dollars that, yeah. uh, that Joe Rogan got. Does, no, they just let us be on iHeartRadio. We did not get paid <laughs> to get over there like uh, like Joe Rogan. If, if you haven't uh, heard about that, go look that up. Uh, it's an interesting story. He he made a boatload of money to – I can't remember where he went. Uh, was it Spotify? I believe it was Spotify, exclusively on Spotify. Yeah, for exclusively. What, Ten million dollars, something like that. Some, some some large number, and we were talking that you know we would have happily taken much less than that. Yeah, half that. Half that easily. <laughs> yeah, maybe even a quarter. <laughs> hey, Joe Rogan, it's just him. I mean, they get two of us <laughs> plus Eric. Yeah, yeah, nice. All right, uh, so that that's that's what news I had. Uh, T Terry, you alluded to a cancellation that you had to share. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, just found this out. Uh, I think guess it was two days ago on the trade show cancellation board. We have a new listing. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> we have we have more precincts reporting. <laughs> uh, MBM Long Beach, California, has officially been canceled for 2020. That's not postponed. It has been canceled. Uh, they are doing though their second breakaway session, and uh, um, Katie over at NBM tells me the first one was very successful. It's called new opportunities and kind of like what we're talking about, Aaron, it's new opportunities based on, uh, the new world of, you know, COVID-19 and that their breakaway session, uh, will be at, uh, will be on June 24th. You can find out about that at the NBM show.com slash looking dash new dash opportunities. And I'm sure, uh, Eric will have that up, he, and he already does. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's so far ahead of us. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Katie again, and Katie at MBM, she's keeping me updated all the time. And by the way, she says she loves the uh, to listen to the two regular guys every Friday. But uh, Katie says that MBM Cleveland and Charlotte are still looking good. So okay. those will be, of course, later in the year, I believe. Cleveland is. Let me check Terry's big book of non travel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of, of, it's just full of eraser marks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's heavy with eraser marks. Uh, September 25th and 26th is MBM Cleveland. And then Charlotte <laughs> is um, uh, November. Sixth and seventh NBM Charlotte. So, there we go. And, and Katie then of course says, we have the. Katie actually commented and says it's true. Hi guys. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, appreciate that you tuning in. Uh, one other comment, Eric, from a little bit earlier. He said you should come do a live broadcast at Deco Summit 2020 this year. It will be a big turnout. Um, we're we're uh, you know. 
let us know. We bring us in. You know, where <laughs> Terry's big book of travel is a lot uh, lighter than it used to be. So uh, yeah. there may be some. Openings. Thank God I um, use pencil. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, we, we uh, obviously um, would would need to you know fork something out. But yeah, totally. Okay, all right. Well, Terry, here's the part of the show that everybody is actually waiting. Uh, in fact, James had said much earlier. Did I miss the dad joke already? <laughs> and uh, so I, we just left left that comment go. But Terry, it's uh, I think you've got a good one for us. I have one. I have a dad joke. Okay, here it goes. So, what are the only types of jokes allowed during a coronavirus quarantine? I don't know. Inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is awesome. That's a good one. Very nice, Terry. And timely, too. I love it. I love it. <laughs> good job. But um bump is, I think, we need one of those in the. Uh, I think I actually have that in my sound effects here. But anyhow, <laughs> let's keep going. I, I, no, I think we should stop and you should look for it now. Because <laughs> you had that look on your face like you're going <laughs> to. I'm looking, but uh, no, it's not there. Never mind. All right. Oh, no, it is. Hold on. I have to respond <laughs> to my daughter's Riley's text with a woohoo because uh, her her um, unemployment um, payment finally caught up with her. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did you guys hear that? The the boat um, um, was that? Did that work? No, try no, didn't hear it. Yeah, it's a little low, but uh, okay. All right, yeah. we'll work on that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sorry. Let's keep going here, Terry. <laughs> good, Christine. Good. I'm glad it made you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. That was, <laughs> back that to, was back really to. important, right? I, I just get a text saying, "Dad, check my checking account." <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Sweet. laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, well let's let's uh, let's keep moving here, Terry. So uh, let's uh, get on into the. You want me to grab it, or you got it here? You I've got it, Aaron. Let's uh, before we before we dive in uh, full bore here. We want to thank everybody for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. And if you're listening to this podcast version, we uh, appreciate you reaching out to your friends so they can become regulators too. And we would love and appreciate you giving us a review, especially over there now at iHeartRadio. Please go over and say, "Hey, I love this show." Um, and you should give them money like Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> we, we are always looking for new guests. If you or anyone you know would like uh, to be on the show, go to calendly.com slash two. That's the number two regular guys. And uh, tell us what your show ideas are. And uh, we would uh, love to have you on. We're always looking certainly for, for new guests, or if you've been on the show before and have something new you'd like to talk about, or it's uh, now, a couple of years ago, heck, Aaron, we could have people who say, hey, I want, I'd like to be back on the show eight years later. So who knew, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, so if you're listening to us live right now, reach out to your friends and, and say, hey, listen uh, to these guys. Uh, go to uh, Facebook and, uh, and uh, two regular guys and uh, reach out to your inter industry friends and help us out. You know, give us your comments and questions. And we're going to be talking niche markets during and after COVID-19. So if you have uh, certainly some markets that, that you've discovered, we'd love to hear about them. So join in and, uh, and Aaron, I guess uh, 20 minutes into the show, it's time to get started. Yeah. So Eric, uh, before we get started though, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Impressions Expo. What is Impressions Expo? Impressions Expo, formerly known as ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. They have five shows that are produced annually in each region of the United States, including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and cap off the year at Fort Worth, Texas. Each of those five annual shows also feature over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much, much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details. And while there, use the promo code REGULARGUYSIE for a free expo pass. Again, make sure you visit ImpressionsExpo.com to get more details. And the two regular guys look forward to seeing you there. 
All right. Well, thank you very much to Impressions for their continued support. Uh, make sure that you are supporting them. Head over to uh, impressionsexpo.com and, and uh, let them know the two regular guys sent you. But uh, as with all of the uh, trade show folks in our industry, they are working their tails off for uh, very little reward right now. In fact, they're probably losing money. So uh, they could definitely use our support um, and uh, so right. definitely go over and check out impressionsexpo.com. So we appreciate their support. All right, Terry, we're finally here. Like you said, 20 minutes in, exactly 20 minutes in, actually. Uh, we are ready to talk some niche markets now and after COVID-19. So, Terry, we're in a whole new world of business right now, and we'll, we'll likely continue to change in one form or another. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to say how long either. You know, it, it's probably for the foreseeable future. I'm sure some changes that are occurring are changes that just kind of needed to occur and were kind of forced into place, you know, things like that. But niche markets, you know, as we've talked for years, have always been a great way to reach customers and have a great deal of success. And so we were talking and boy, it's been a while since we've done a, a niche market show. So this seemed like a perfect opportunity. Um, yeah. so, so let's talk about some new new niche markets and, and new approaches to maybe our traditional niche markets. We kind of broke this up into two parts, but uh, you know, how do we dive into this? Well, you know, Aaron, let's first, let's talk a little bit about what niche markets are. And, and I'm sure we have listeners who, uh, who basically take business from wherever they can get it. Sure. Uh, my market is everyone because I really need to pay my rent, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, but a niche market and, and, you know, you know, as you said, you and I preach niche markets because, Here's the beauty of a niche market, and a niche market might be, uh, you know, you're you're into uh, you're into 1960s uh, Corvettes, yeah. and 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 you own you have three in your garage, and you go to all the shows, and by gosh, you should be there selling shirts, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what a niche market is. It's a market that that you are so zeroed in on that it's very very difficult for somebody to compete with you. And, and that's that's the beauty of it. And, you know, I've talked about on here many times, there are secrets in every market. And, and the secret might be, well, the example I gave the other day was uh, the person who was in my screen printing class who says she's, she sells at forest fires. And, and, and who do you sell to? You sell to firefighters who want that shirt that says, I fought the XYZ fire in somewhere in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And and hundreds of firefighters line up to get those shirts and and she has her trailer and she has her little she's got her generator and a little dryer and and she's there screen printing or any type of decoration she's there screen printing shirts that say i fought this fire and and all these uh firefighters are lined up to get that shirt because they want to identify they want to say i was there you know this was a this was a, a moment in my life. I participated in this. And, yeah. and that's what a niche market is. And, and, and uh, you know, Aaron, I always talk about there are all these secrets. And she goes, well, I, I have the secret. I know the secret of this market. And I'm like, really? Well, what's the secret? And she said, I, my day job, and all those decorators out there know what I'm talking about. My day job. Yeah. <laughs> my, my day job is I work for a chemical company that makes the chemical that is dropped from airplanes onto the fires. Sure. And I said, so that's your secret? And she goes, no, that's not my secret. My secret is they have to tell us where the firefighters are so we don't drop the chemical on them. And so she goes, I know before anybody knows where all the firefighters are gathering so that uh, we don't drop this chemical on them so I can beat everybody there. I'm there selling shirts when the other the other vendors, and there are lots of vendors, by the way, who who follow the firefighter or the, the, the forest fire market. And um, and so she's like, We're I'm there selling shirts before these guys are even pulling in the parking lot and opening their doors. So, you know, th there are lots of secrets to niche markets, and and I think everybody needs one or two or three niche markets that they focus their efforts on. And and yeah, you know, sometimes you need business and sometimes you'll take an order just because you need to keep the presses running or whatever, you yeah. know, the embroidery machine running or whatever. But but you should reach a point where when somebody approaches you about doing an order, you say, does this fit my niche? Does it not fit my niche? And, you know, an example, I, I'm, I've been doing a lot of webinars lately, so I, I forgive me if, I've, if I'm repeating this, but uh, when I was in Kansas City, we were doing $13.5 million in screen printing a year. 
our average order size was 72 pieces. Mm -hmm. And when we would come in with an order for 5,000 pieces for some resort somewhere or something like that, my crew would fall over themselves trying to get that out the door. Now you'd think if you're doing 72 pieces where your niche is, I can set up this press, I can print this order, I can tear down this press in an hour or whatever, that, that if you had 5,000 pieces, it would be that much easier. But, but it wasn't because it was outside of our niche. It was outside of the way we normally do business. So, you know, sometimes you have to look at, at people who approach you and say, hey, can you print on this? Well, yeah, you might be able to spend half a day figuring out how to print on a wine boda or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if it's not within your niche, then maybe you should uh, send them on their way to, to somebody who focuses on that type of printing. And you, you keep doing the things that you do best and uh, in the long run, make a lot more money doing it. So, and Hey, you know what, if, if every day for the last three weeks, somebody approached me and said, Hey, can you print on wine boaters? Maybe I need to figure out how to print on wine boaters. So I, I can tell you, by the way, I've done thousands of them, but <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> because nice. I've had those people ask for them. I yeah. used to print for the fraternity and sorority market. So yeah. yeah. Wine boaters. Yeah. No, Football I mean, I think season. it's really interesting. And, and, uh, We'll forgive you because I think you told that story last week. But <laughs> no, it's, just fast forward through that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a really good it's really good information though. I mean, I think I think you're right. You know, focus on what you're best at. Be the best at what you're going to be. Now, here's the here, here's the thing. Especially those that are starting out, and like I said, you need a little bit more. You, you do have to understand that. Um, yes, we're going to focus on this, but if your customers are telling you something different. You are going to, you know, like you said, you you figured out how to do the wine. What what is what is that great? Wine talking? boda. Wine oh, okay. Oh come on, you were in college. No, nope. you, you didn't sneak alcohol into a football game. Come on. No, no never, Jerry. I'm, <laughs> look at me. Look at me. I'm a. This, this, you don't see the halo up here. <laughs> That's right. The heck. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, uh, re really good information there, I, I, and I think that kind of leads us into this. Let's catch a couple of comments here because there's some good ones. Um, Eric. Uh, Mickelson said uh, riches in the niches and uh, Tom said key to niche markets insider info. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and then Eric uh, said, don't run your company like a swap meet. And uh, Jan shared uh, now is time to hit up those schools with online spirit stores, make a list of all the school organizations within the school and contact them. It, she's already having good response. And then uh, Jan says, I agree with the, that Terry pick a lane. Um, and then James said, uh, what kind of information is the only kind worth anything in a niche market during a quarantine? <laughs> Insider info. Okay. <laughs> nice. Way to Somebody was paying attention. Yeah, nice, yeah, nicely, so nice to, way, way to tie that yeah, in there, James. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. Christine shared, uh, concentrating on a niche might mean a smaller overall market, but a greater chance of selling to a larger portion of the market. Don't underestimate the power of insider knowledge and having connection in your niche. And, and I think, you know, along that line, what you were talking about there, Terry, is that, you know, the 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 passion that you have about that niche is going to be important because the more passion you have about something the more information you're willing to you know dive into you know i mean if, for me you know we've talked about my love of volleyball so you know i know things that other people don't know about volleyball because i i lived and breathed it for a very long time and and so now there's probably people that know a little bit more and so i have to stay in in my area of knowledge you know kind of the not the real highest level, but, but that kind of thing. So I think that's really, really good point there. Christine is, is having that understanding and, and insider information. You know, Aaron, uh, last week we talked about this also is that, you know, you, you see a market over here that's lucrative. And so you want to jump into it, but if you try to talk the talk with, with those people and you don't really know that market, as soon as you say the wrong thing, they're going to be like, no, oh, you're you're just a sales guy. You're just you're yeah. just trying. You're just uh you you uh you read the back of the book and you're just repeating all the catchphrases. You yeah, know exactly. So. Yeah, it stands out for sure, and uh, and that is the and, and that is why you know picking a a passion area of yours is probably the best thing to do. Now, can you do other niche markets that aren't uh, in your your current wheelhouse? You certainly can, but like you said, you got to be careful about what you're you're sharing, and 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 you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to really right. kind of get into the details and figure it all out. So, um, Eric shared uh, your first niche 
being in a place where you have deep personal knowledge is fantastic and can help folks who aren't natural salespeople. Um, and yeah, he's got exactly a, right. a very good article about that on over on his webpage at ericcampbell.com. So check that out. And then thank you for uh, sharing the uh, Boda bag uh, information for me, Eric. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and James, I have never had a wine Boda. This is, this is true. <laughs> but, um, weird. <laughs> okay. So, so you put some gin in a wine Boda, you put half can of seven up, a little lemon juice and a squirt of blue food coloring. And they're called killer bluegills, six inches of death. <laughs> all right just, <laughs> i'll have to give that a, a try uh, i think you have to be like 20 to to be able to uh to drink that and survive oh, okay. so. <laughs> all right, well, i'm well beyond that unfortunately so <laughs> all right terry well at, at 30 minutes in here let's 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 dive into this and let's start talking about newly created niche markets as a result of the COVID 19 situation and i'm gonna dive in first because i i think this is a quick one uh you know, if you don't have e-commerce set up with your own line of products that you've created, I would say this is a perfect time to do so. Um, you know, this to me is an area, even if, you know, your business is fully custom prints and, and stuff like that, uh, having this is kind of a backup to, you know, keep the machines running when uh, when the custom work isn't there. I think it's a cool thing. It's, so you probably have something that you're very passionate about, some you know, uh, for me, it could be volleyball, it could be whatever. And, and um, Terry could be, you know, vampires or, uh, you know, <laughs> ghosts, ghosts <laughs> or writing know. stories about them. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so there's all sorts of things. But if you come up with your own pre pre design, you know, where you're not having to create any artwork, it's already all there. And you could just pop up a little e commerce store very quickly. Um, the, the new Facebook shops is an avenue to do this. Uh, you could put stuff up on Etsy, um, or you could even have your own Equid site. It's and that's E C W I D. Uh, I used to call it Euclid for a very long time. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised it, Todd hasn't commented yet about that. <laughs> I know, I know. So you could have your own Equid site with up to 10 products on it for, for free. And, and so you have this place out there where, um, you know, you just have items that you can sell and, and you probably don't have to do a whole lot with it until you need to. And then, you know, but the problem is, is if you're trying to create that now, you're already behind the eight ball. So the next time a slowdown happens, uh, you now have that kind of sitting there and then you should be able to go and turn it on and start talking about it more, do some ads, you know, do some other things like that. So to me, it's just a, I think it's just a kind of a cool backup plan to have to kind of keep things going when there is a, a slowdown. So uh, what are your thoughts on that, Terry? Well, and, and here's the thing, you know, people sit and scratch their heads and think, okay, what has no one ever done before? What's the most unique thing? And we talked about this a little bit. We kept grabbing from this, this session, you know, last week talking about um, e-commerce, but but you know what? You don't have, you know, you, you mentioned ghosts and vampires. Well, you know, there are lots of ghosts and lots of vampire types of shirts and products and things out there. But, but guess what? There, there are tens, hundreds of thousands of people who are totally into that. You know, that uh, just look on Facebook at the walking dead forums, you know, and it's constantly mm -hmm. posting pictures and comments and things about uh, a, a TV show. And, and, and you don't have to be, the only one doing this. Just just think of something unique and exciting. And uh, he, here's what I say: you don't have to be the only one in the marketplace. Just do it better than everybody else. And mm -hmm. you know, Aaron, as you mentioned, it, it takes a little bit of work. You have to study these markets. You have to study who these customers are. Everything we talk about on this show is you have to do a little bit of work, mm -hmm. but it's work that's going to pay off for you. You know, uh, learning about these, you know, what's unique about this particular marketplace. And, and then you can own it. You can own that marketplace. And, you know, I've certainly, you know, as I said, Aaron, I, I, I used to print in a fraternity and sorority market. And, you know, everybody and his brother who's near a college campus tries to sell in that marketplace. Well, we, don't, we were doing multi-millions of dollars in doing one color prints on, on T-shirts and cups and glasses. And, and just because we totally, completely understood that customer in that marketplace. So, yeah. You know, again, you don't you don't have to be the only one in the market. Just just uh, work hard at doing it better than everybody else, and you'll be successful with it. And, yep. and you know, it, it, Aaron, it's an asset that other people are in that marketplace. That means their customers already there. Yeah, so, exactly. 
you know, no, that's you, a good you point. don't have to create your own customer base. Correct. And, and, you know, if you've, like I said, if it's there, then it just is a matter of, of doing that work to get into that Facebook group to, you know, start putting it out there. Um, and, and, you know, when, when you don't need that, then you, you stop doing that and you're not focused on that, but you have that there. And nowadays there's little of any cost to be, to be able to have that available as, as kind of that backup plan for you. So like I said, the, the Equus store, you can have 10 items on there and not have, don't pay a thing. It doesn't cost a thing. So, um, Let's see here. There's been a ton of great comments happening in the uh, comments section here, Terry. We won't be able to uh, get to every single one of them, but there is one that uh, and we'll try to get to as many as we can here. But Eric said, uh, when your business is slow, you start selling to the world. How can you focus mentally to stay in your niche? Uh, Terry, I've got a quick idea about that, and then I'll let you uh, take, okay. take a swing at it too. But I, I think the most important thing here is to understand you know, when you talk about who your niche is, the most important part of that is having a real understanding and relationship with your customers. And so when, when business is slow, when things are slow, I think you got to, you got to get your focus on them and start talking to them and start understanding what their needs are. So the niche is still that group of people but maybe their needs are changing, you know, and, and you got to figure out what they need and then figure out how you can solve, you know, find out what their problems are and then figure out how you can solve that problem for them. And that may mean that you're going to have to do a bit of shifting. I mean, look at all the people that went from, I mean, heck, even some of the biggest companies out there went from, you know, making something to making ventilators or, you know, some things like that. So it just, it's, I think it really becomes a matter of, uh, getting relationships built within your niche and then start talking to them about, okay, I know things have changed. How can I still help you? You know, because that's, that's the whole goal is to help solve somebody's problem. So your thoughts, Terry? Well, and, and, and maybe, maybe there's another niche that, that you could be involved in. And, and, and I'll go back to the fraternity and sorority market that, that I was talking about before, Aaron, when I got to that company, that's all they did, which meant everyone in the company was laid off all summer. And of course, I walked in the door and said, whoa, hold on, hold on. Let's let's find another marketplace that needs all this equipment, all these all these uh, these people, all this art talent. Yeah. Let's find, what else could we do? Let's add mm. another niche to this. Let's not just be a fraternity sorority company. So all summer long, we were contract printers in the ad specialty market. And uh, and, you know, and, and I would flat out say I can do as much business as you can give me up until May 15th. And on May 15th, I have to stop because the average turnaround time in the fraternity and sorority market for an order, brace yourselves out there, 24 hours. And so um, I, I couldn't afford to fill up my schedule because the order I get today, I need to ship tomorrow in that marketplace. But we added a new niche market of of uh, ad specialty printing. And the beauty was ad specialty folks, promotional products people are always looking for good decorators because lots and lots and lots of decorators out there, not very many good decorators. And that that that's probably a hard fact, but anybody who does things like listen to two regular guys or any other type of uh, way you go out there and get an education, you know, you're probably not in that group. The, the group of people who who populate our marketplace out there of, of decorators are um, the people who are not being successful, the people who are doing poor quality work. They're not doing anything to improve what they they can accomplish. So it's easy for me to say there aren't very many good decorators because uh, a, a good majority of the people listening to the show are in that group of good decorators. And, yeah. and we've all dealt with it. Everybody has a customer. Some of us have a hundred customers that came to us in desperation because somebody screwed up an order. Right. And, yeah. and I'd like to see some comments about, uh, you know, people that, that, that came to you because can you do this order? Can can you do a three color print for me? Because apparently no one else in town is capable of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so we're not saying that because you listen to this show, you're a good decorator, 
but we're implying that. So how <laughs> <laughs> you said that right when I've had a yeah, sorry. Of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, a couple other comments to hit here real quick. James says uh, in any niche market, your graphics need to be accurate to the market that, or your toast. For instance, if it's a racing car niche market, you better print the correct car graphics for the race uh, where you're selling on site. If it's music, get the guitar right. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the people that are enthusiasts about, you know, the racing or the music or, uh, you know, vintage airplanes or, or whatever, they're going to recognize when the light bulb isn't right or the, oh, the yeah. graphic isn't right. I mean, and and then like James said, you're toast. And so. stand in your booth and point it out to everyone else. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't invented until 1921. <laughs> you got it on here. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kelly says, facts, be the best, outwork the rest. And uh, I think Kelly has uh, proven that uh, in, in her success. So yep. um, I think that's good stuff. All right, Terry, what's what's next? Uh, I'm uh, I'm well, at, at a point where I'm 95 percent sure this is going to be a two parter. So just <laughs> throwing that out there <laughs> like all of our shows. And, and, you know, Aaron, still eight years later, all these 355 episodes or whatever, I still start every show thinking, man, I hope we have enough, uh, enough info to cover. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that I don't put my info in until, you know, like one o'clock last night. So <laughs> I, I, I did look at the outline this morning. And <laughs> Sorry Aaron, Aaron spent some time with this last night, but okay. Well, uh, a new, new, uh, niche it's face masks. And, you know, uh, I, I, I've kind of experienced it from both sides. Uh, one of the, um, one of the manufacturers, told uh told somebody that i know recently that they just gotten in fifty thousand face masks and they were gone in like three days and you know had more coming but um then the companies that have really stepped up and and uh like the guys that were action engineering making making face masks platens for direct to garment printers uh the folks over at vastex making um face mask attachments for their screen printing presses. And I, and I certainly maybe shouldn't have been name dropping because I know a lot of other folks out there are doing exactly the same thing, yeah. but these, uh, these new products, these new platens came like that. I mean, in no time. And they were, they were not, they not only designed them, developed them, designed them, but started manufacturing them within literally within days. And, uh, and, and it's a huge marketplace. And um, you know, the, the the it's not going away and and I'll give a really good example because I you know I always talk about um you know you should always think I should do shirts well you now you should think I should do face masks because I was at shocking Aaron uh last week I was at cold beers and cheeseburgers <laughs> and, no uh, way <laughs> yeah. I even posted a picture they were showing a league of their own and I'm like, man, ESPN has gone deep into the archives for this footage <laughs> since there are no sports happening right now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but everybody working there, you know, you go into a like anybody who's anywhere now where the restaurants are open, uh, like like here in Arizona. Well, you walk in and some people have the what are those called gators? Yeah. Uh, some yeah. people have have a face mask that's you know from the drugstore. Some people have one that has a cat face on it. Well, in cold beers and cheeseburgers, everyone there had a black face mask with the cold beers and cheeseburgers logo on the left-hand side. And I thought, that is super cool. It, exactly right. There you go. It's not cold and, beers and uh, cheeseburgers, but it's black with the, uh, <laughs> my logo. Yeah. And, uh, it, but the thing is, somebody went in there to cold beers and said, hey, I know you have, uh, I think they have 12 locations. I can get these face masks to you for all your employees. I can have them to you in two days. And... Uh, I, I know you have stores opening in Arizona. They're probably not open in California yet, but I can have them ready for them. And and somebody went out and said, hey, here's a new niche market. I should go to every bar, every restaurant, every nail salon, because, you know, you can't go have your nails done if you and the, the person there doing your nails isn't wearing a face mask. And why not have some uniformity to it? And and I walked in, I thought, that looks really cool. I'm looking around. Of course, you know, I'm a decorator. I, I I'm judgy when it comes to, <laughs> to, to any type of decorated apparel or products. And, and, but I thought what a better presentation that makes for cold beers and cheeseburgers than some other place that, that, that you might go and everybody's wearing a mixed match of, of face masks and things like that. So, so that there's that new marketplace and, and the manufacturers out there, the, the equipment manufacturers, the product manufacturers, they are bending over backwards to make this this happen for all of us. So, 
there's huge opportunity there. And, and um, the, you know, what about this? What about, you know, and, and this is kind of ties into what you were saying uh, before when uh, one of our listeners said, you know, what happens if my niche dries up? Well, may, maybe you have a customer that, that, yeah, they are not producing a lot of product right now, but maybe they have customers. Uh, maybe they want to donate face masks and you can facilitate that for them. All, all they have to do is say, do so many masks and deliver them here. And, and maybe somebody, maybe one of your customers would like to donate to the local police department and face masks that just say to protect and serve. And, and it, it doesn't have the name of the company that donated them, but just creating goodwill in the industry. And, and think about all the people out there who need face masks. And you know, when you start thinking about it, what about social workers, Ch children's protective services? You know, they've got to go knock on doors every single day. I mean, they don't get a day off. They don't get to stay home because of uh, uh, of the virus. They've still got to go out there and protect children. What about Meals on Wheels volunteers? I had a buddy I worked with uh, back in Kansas City every Wednesday he went and delivered Meals on Wheels. Well, wouldn't it be cool if somebody donated to all those Meals on Wheels volunteers, little logo Meals on Wheels face mm -hmm. masks, and, and maybe it doesn't bring you cash reward as a company, but but maybe that company wants to create goodwill and do something right. It's it's a great philanthropic idea that matters in the, in, in, in the world uh, at large. And you know, maybe the only identification is that box that gets delivered that says XYZ company uh, uh, here to help or whatever. And uh, I, I just think that it, it's it's something that's probably a little bit overlooked out there that that maybe if your customer doesn't, you, you can't sell them a product that they can sell. Maybe maybe you can uh, you can sell them a product that they can that they can donate. So something yeah. to think about. Yeah, definitely. I think that's an interesting avenue. And, and you know, th there there can be a lot that comes out of that. You know, you talked about the goodwill that you're creating. You know, get get your employees, if you have employees, get them involved with the project. You know, they'll they'll get that same feeling of, yes, we did something for the greater good by getting them involved. Um, here in a little bit, we're going to have uh, Tom Round with us. And, you know, he is the king of self-promotion. So, what what can you do within that? I'm not saying take advantage of the situation in a negative way, but you know if you're able to do something and you have the ability to donate or help people out or you know kind of do some of that stuff, you know the the news outlets are dying for stories like that. They they yeah. they need to get some some good news along with all the bad news. You know, and I, yeah, I know and that don't go overboard with it. Now don't don't donate to the, your local church that says Jesus saves on one side and save big at XYZ company on the other. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have to obviously do it in the, in the right, in the right vein, but if, if it all comes from a good place, you, you shouldn't not be able to get some publicity out of that. And, 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 but again, you know, involve the people around you and, and involve your customers, you know, help them be able to be the heroes to the things. I, I love that, that you said, you know, help them to donate because then you make them the heroes in, in the situation. Right. And boy, uh, a, a lifelong customer uh, would be an understatement at that point if you're, you're exactly able to right. make them a hero. So, um, all right, let's see here, Terry. Let's uh, let's keep rolling here. We've got some uh, some other comments, but uh, we'll leave that. If you're catching the podcast version of this, please make sure you get over to uh, facebook.com slash two regular guys and, and check out the comments from the regulators in there, or you can hit our YouTube channel and two regular guys podcast over there and, and see, uh, some comments over on that side as well. Uh, let's see here. What uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm terribly important before we keep moving here. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep moving. Terry, I know we always joke about 52 niche markets uh, in, in you, you know your your seminar that you, <laughs> that you did. 52 niche markets in 52 minutes. My seminar of good intentions. <laughs> yes, seminar of good intentions. I love it. 52 niche markets in 52 minutes. And um, I live I in know. a world of good intentions, Aaron. Yeah, I, good, good. <laughs> as do I, as we get to the 48th minute here and we're not even halfway through. Um, <laughs> and, so, and by the way, is Tom waiting in the wings? I just wanted to check in with Eric. Nope, and, not yet. Okay. Not yet. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on that okay. and uh, see what happens. But anyhow, with, with that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bundle one here so we can get hopefully kill two birds with one stone. Um, so when we talk about a, a it doesn't necessarily have to be a new niche, not that this niche is new and being created, but 
um, maybe something worth looking at if you haven't ever gone this route and it's babies, not making, not making babies. I mean, like, <laughs> uh, I've but, gone uh, that route four times <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a very lucrative niche, was it? It was not. It's, it's still, that's why I was so excited that Riley had money in her bank account. And so you were just that. getting ready to transfer money to pay her rent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Um, but no, so, and, and I don't know what's going to happen for sure. We, we don't know at all, but you see the jokes out there. You see the people talking about, you know, 13 years from now, we may have a, a baby boom on our hands, the quarantines. You know, the, <laughs> um, it, you know so uh, there, there's, there's certainly, um, they're all very introverted. Okay. I'm getting a picture of what a quarantine is going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, so, Hey, be, be ready to have some shirts for that when the, when that time comes or, <laughs> or whatnot, uh, maybe the, the program where they you know, take in pictures of the kids as they grow in the same shirt that has a quarantine joke on it or something like that. <laughs> right. Um, you know, th th there's obviously lots of different ways, but you know, uh, no matter what the the ebb and flow, you know, holiday, not holiday, wh whatever, the ebb and flow of everything, people are still having babies. It, it's just, it's in reality. It's how, how the human race exists is we still have babies. That's right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no matter how many dumb things we do, we still have babies. So, um, you know, th there's a market for that. We, babies need blankets. They need onesies. They need hats. They need everything so they can have that perfect Instagram picture when they take their first, you know, when they get out there on social media. So, um, so that's one thing that, and then as, as I said, I'm going to bundle this. So when you talk about kids, let's talk about the older kids, you know, school was cut short for most of the part, most of the kids out there. Uh, and, and now we're getting to summer break. Uh, you know, my, my kid had traditionally gone to a summer camp that was put on by our local community and, and that's been canceled. So, you know, so if you were doing shirts for uh, the St. Peter's Rexplex uh, camp, you're not doing those shirts anymore because that got canceled. Well, guess what? Those kids still have to do something. And it's tough. You know, everybody's trying to juggle. We're still trying to figure it out ourselves. Uh, you know, what what's going to happen? But, you know, the, the, the kids that were going to work at those camps, now they're looking for stuff to do themselves. So we're getting creative there. And we may end up having Camp Montgomery in our basement <laughs> with uh, just my son and, and uh, some of his closest friends and families that we know well, because, you know, we, we feel more comfortable uh, making sure nobody's, right. you know, passing or, or catching anything. Um, so it's just going to take a little bit more creativity of finding, you know, I mean, heck, I'd, I'd uh, if we end up with Camp Montgomery, I'd certainly love to have some shirts for the kids. They, they, they'd eat it up, you know, and then they would, they would, they would love it. So you're just going to have to get a little more creative, find what is happening. Talk to the people out there, talk to your local, you know, Facebook groups, school groups. Uh, the, the, you know, my, my wife's in the uh, moms of third graders, Facebook messenger chat and, and get in there and find out what people are doing. And then that's how you can kind of go find that, that opportunity to provide a shirt, provide masks, whatever it is that, that you need to do. So th there's another niche for well, you. Well, my, uh, my grandson, Henry, uh, is in a forest preschool, and, which means that you go out in the woods and you have, uh, you have your boots up to your knees and you have a rain slicker because he's in Washington State. And, and uh, they, they have a lot of educational things, but it's all outside. And there is a lot of jumping in puddles. And before he gets in the old minivan, you got to pour all the water out of his boot. But, um, <laughs> you know, of course, you know, especially in Washington State and Seattle area, they, obviously that was canceled a few months ago. So they started doing um, like 10 o'clock on Tuesday. It's craft hour and it's online with the camp. And 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 what are you going to tell the kids to do? It's 10 o'clock. It's craft hour. Go put on your camp shirt and we're going to do this craft. And and um, and of course, the parents know you need to have this, this and this or maybe a packet gets sent out. And, and you know, all those summer camps could do exactly that. You know, uh, normally we have we have craft hour at 10 o'clock or, or at the end of the day, we sing camp songs. So we're going to do that today at three o'clock. Make sure you're wearing your camp shirt. And and so is the camp going to be able to send all those shirts out? They could probably or you as a decorator say, listen, just give me the size and the address. And for X number of dollars, I'll send out the camp shirt and whatever else you'd like me to send in that packet. I'll send it out to every one of the campers with a note that says, 
Be sure at three o'clock on Tuesday, we're going to sing camp songs. Be sure you're wearing your shirt and uh, and take pictures of you singing in your in your uh, family room. And we're going to be posting those afterwards. So there's there's opportunities out there, uh, you know, and it's it's like teams. Some teams are, you know, like they're not going to be playing, but those kids still want their jersey. They still want the shirt. So the opportunity is still there. They still want to say, hey, I was on the team. And so um, sometimes the opportunity might come from you saying, hey, you know, uh, little league league, you know, all these kids still want to wear these shirts around. You know, we'll take care of sending them out. Just give us the name, the size, the number. And, uh, and, and we'll take care of the whole thing for you. And again, the opportunity is probably there. You just need to kind of prod it along a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Sorry. I was, uh, uh, sending some messages to see if we could find uh, where where Tom's hiding at, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we may uh, not get Tom in here. But uh, no, we'll, knowing we'll Tom, he's that. taken all the ideas we talked about, and he's right now creating companies and uh, web pages to do all these things. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe Tom is maybe. the ultra uh, ultimate entrepreneur. <laughs> yes, he is for sure. So, um, all right, a couple comments here, Terry. Uh, Tanya says uh, we just launched a program for realtors can be done for a lot of industries. Um, so Very that's, good. that's great. Uh, let's see here. Um, Cindy said uh, we were at a restaurant this morning. Our waitress just told us she is expecting she was off for too long. <laughs> 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 Stay, staying at home, sheltering in place. Yeah, I, I, it was interesting. I was looking for some data on that last night and there it, it's obviously too soon for, for any real data on that. But there's some people that say we're, we're actually going to have a not a baby boom or and then there's other sides that say so it, it'll be interesting to see. But but again, people are still having babies no matter if there's a baby boom or not. So there, there's an you opportunity. Know, once you've watched everything on Netflix, then you're looking for other stuff to do. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then Brian says, uh, don't forget survivor gear for those reopening. We survived as a potential, uh, a potent message, sorry. And hundreds of thousands of organizations will have survived. So uh, yeah, I think, you know, that, that, uh, that sense of pride, Hey, <laughs> we made it through uh, to this point in, in the Corona virus situation or COVID-19, yeah. whatever you want to call it. So, all right, uh, Terry, what's, uh, what's next here? Are we going to continue moving forward? <laughs> yeah, let, let's, let's go for a little bit. Um, okay, sure. Let's get, at least get your, your next one. Well, and then uh, we may cut and then the, the changed markets, maybe we can uh, hit another time here. All right. Well, so is it too early for quarantine shirts, Aaron? And, and here's what I think we're garment and product decorators. We live on that edge. So I'm all about having a shirt that I've been self quarantined for six years or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is basically what I, you know, and, and, or, or how about this shirt? And this would be perfect for me. I've seen every episode of the walking dead. Ask me questions about quarantine. <laughs> exactly. See, I can see that being your, your, uh, your e-commerce store, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'll survive. I've seen it all. And by the way, I've mentioned this on the show before, not one character of the hundreds that have lived and died on walking dead ever hoarded toilet paper. So stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm uh, texting uh, here, so <laughs> trying to find that out. That's a good one, Terry. I like uh, I like that. Any other ideas in in that? Well, avenue? I've seen Living? I've seen uh, several people doing uh, class of 2020 with the zeros being toilet paper rolls and and you know lots of things along those lines. And you know, yeah, I get it. I understand. It's, it's people are are sick and people have passed from it. Uh, but at the same time, too, it's, you know, you have to kind of laugh at yourselves and laugh at the situation. And and uh, some of it, obviously, is a little bit overboard and a little silly. And, you know, you yeah, have a little fun, I think. And as I said, we, it's always the the garment and product decorators who, who kind of push the envelope a little and make people cringe a little bit and go, I think I have to have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, definitely... Uh, I, I think you hit it right on the head, though, Terry. I mean, just have to, you know, be be aware, but but don't get too full of yourselves. And people that are a little too full of themselves, it's okay. I, I you know, just let them do their thing, and you know, go to the level that that you're comfortable with. And and you know, if 
people don't like it. Again, that's where having a niche and knowing your niche and being part of a niche, because your niche isn't going to is going to be interested in in that. You know. Uh, yeah. And and if people are not interested in it, then they're not part of your niche and, and you're talking to the wrong people. So exactly, exactly yeah, right. Totally. All right. Well, uh, Terry, so yes, that's, uh, basically halfway through. <laughs> so we'll, <laughs> we'll find time to, to re redo this. Um, we, I, I think because we are kind of booked up for a, a little bit here, Terry, we will put all of the information that we had uh, into the show notes when this comes out. So just make sure you get over to tworegularguys.com and then you can see all of the other uh, info and, and ideas we had, but we can come back and cover it in more detail a little bit later on. Um, we do have our guest here with us. Oh, and okay. uh, so let's, let's bring Tom in, Eric, if you don't mind. Tom, if you're ready. Hey, Tom, how are you? Hey, um, you're doing great, guys. How are you guys doing? Look at that. We're in your ThreadX uh, uh, Johnny Cupcakes uh, yeah. t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's from that's the original ThreadX, huh? Yeah, yeah. I love this shirt. This is great. I that's do too. One. What's the hat, Tom? Uh, hat is Click Funnels. Okay. All right. I was gonna say the logo looked familiar, but it just didn't didn't click with me right away. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for joining us, Tom. Appreciate you. I know you guys are are, are super busy, and uh, you've got all sorts of things coming happening. Uh, Shirt Lab. I mean, the bonus content's been fantastic. So thanks for all of the information you guys are sharing. But let's talk a little bit about the summit. It's coming up. Uh, what Monday? Yes, Monday. Um, actually, we're starting Sunday night with a virtual happy hour. Um, starting at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 7 Central. Um, and usually the night before we do our live events, we've got a networking party. And typically it's, you know, beers and wings. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> and we do it at a brewery or bar or somewhere. So we said, you know what? This is a great opportunity for people to meet each other, for us to make some introductions. If someone, uh, sees either a speaker or someone else in the industry that they're like, wow, I've been following this guy on Facebook a while, but I want an intro to him. Usually we do that at the live events. Well, we want an opportunity to do that. So we're going to do a Zoom room on Sunday night. Um, it's a Sunday, but if you want Sunday fun day, you want a cocktail, have a beer, or whatever your favorite cocktail is well. And we'll be in the Zoom room doing Q&A. We've got a couple cool activities planned. And if uh, somebody sees another person in there and they want um, an introduction, um, you know, virtual introduction um, into another room or something like that. Um, I am more than happy to make those introductions and help connect people. That's one thing we've seen um, from uh, this event when we were mm -hmm. at FredX. That's how me and Marshall came up with the idea of doing um, Shirt Lab and collaborating together of both, you know, my marketing and sales expertise with Marshall on the operation side and saying like, let's bring this to life. Um, so it's all about these connections. What we've been seeing um, from these live events is the industry, like, you know, it's a combination of virtual Facebook groups. And then we go to the trade shows or we go to these live events and we build these connections and we see a lot of business happen out of it. People get together with contract printing, uh, people to get together to innovate ideas. The Here for Good campaign, Sloan, you know, splashed across the world, basically. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really amazing. So uh, we're hoping to, to bring that together with this event as well. Cool. So, Tom, you've obviously given us a lot of great stuff already right off the top here. But uh, wh why? Wh what else is in it for them? Well, why should they attend or, or, or listen? I mean, the cool part, free event, if, if you yes. want to participate. Um, in fact, I, I put a, a link up there if people want to go find out more. Uh, I would just, uh, I actually have a little kind of uh, link from my website at aaronmontgomery.info forward slash shirt lab summit. But uh, talk to us about uh, why shops should attend. So for this event, the cool thing we're able to do virtually is bring a lot more expert speakers um, into the fold. So at our live events, typically we have five or six um, speakers throughout the day, and that's all you can really pack into a live event. So with this, since we're going virtual, we're able to do 30 plus speakers, um, approximately 10 per day. And their expectation is we don't expect you to sit in front of the computer for hours on end and watch every single one, but you can pick and choose and say, hey, I really need to know about Facebook marketing right now. 
or I really need to learn how to build a sales team or um, you know, somebody's going to be diving into something on the operation side, whether it's embroidery or screen printing, and I want to listen to that expert and see what they have to say sure. and join in the Q&A. So they can pick the bits and pieces of what they need to help their business right now. And I think now more than ever with what everyone's going through, um, there could be a few little tips or piece of advice um, that they can ask. You know, Mark Coudre, uh, he's, he's I've, I've leaned on him for a lot of information. He's been through the ups and the downs and the downturns and everything in between. Yeah. And, you know, when we can rely on, um, you know, some of the people in this industry that have been through those and get that information out to the rest of the industry, it can only help us um, make the right choices and the right decisions at this time. Yeah. So uh, I, I know, uh, Tom, you can't go through the list of 30, boy, well, could, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you tell us just a, who a few of the speakers are and, and where somebody can go to find the, the entire list? Yes. Uh, so you can go to shirtlabsummit.com to get the entire list. Um, there was just some absolutely, you know, the whole the whole list is, you know, experts from top to bottom, all in different um, areas. I said, Mark does a, a fine job of he's been through everything. Um, Josh Ellsworth from Stalls, uh, Dana Derrick's on the Dream 100. We use that for our marketing all the time. Um, Mark Gervais. Uh, he's operating a shop, I believe, is it in China or Japan? Um, Marshall interviewed him and they've got like something like a hundred autos or something. So some coming from a shop that big is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Jared from Rockford Art Deli, Joyce, uh, the embroidery coach. So we, we've got some, you know, stuff on the embroidery side. We've got some promotional products, people in there. Um, Tim Williams from, uh, YR store. Uh, Brad White gets into Brad White and Ken um, Seidel. They jump into sales, so it's like a little bit of a nice mix, like I said, between sales, marketing, um, on the operation side, screen printing operations. Uh, we got lawn winners. Um, we've got you know just a nice variety there. So, like I said, like if if you're not you don't have the time or you're not going to watch everything, you don't need to. Uh, but you can pick and choose what's going to help you the most um, right now. Of course, Aaron Montgomery, amazing <laughs> interview. Um, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed that a lot. So um, just a lot, a lot of good stuff. You good made me blush, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy to do. So. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> All right. So I guess last question for you, Tom, before we, we let you get out of here. Um, is this going to replace live events? Um, you know, we're trying to figure out what, what that looks like going forward. And nobody knows, you know, in some, I, uh, I sold a press to somebody yesterday and the guy came to my shop and we're getting loaded up and he said, what is, is there going to be trade shows in the fall? Is there going to be trade shows, you know, um, impressions expo in long beach? Cause that's where, it, you know, that's where he met me at. Yeah. Um, and I was like, gosh, I don't know. This totally changes the landscape of things of when people are going to feel comfortable going to these big, massive events, trade shows, whatever. Um, or, you know, our past share live events have been limited to about 50 people. Is 50 people a comfortable number? Um, what is that comfort level and what is that number? We don't know. So that's why we're bringing the virtual event um, and trying to create that experience that, you know, it's good. Uh, the other nice thing about the virtual event is you don't have to fly anywhere. You don't have to book a hotel room. So, and it's a free ticket. So um, as far as budgets go right now, I know everyone's tightening <laughs> up a little bit. Um, you can, you know, sit at home and enjoy it from the comfort of your couch or from your office and you don't have to travel expenses to go with it and you get the free ticket. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Well, Tom, thank you so much for your time. I, I know it was quick, but, uh, you know, we, we covered a lot of ground and uh, looking forward to uh, Sunday night, starting uh, with the virtual happy hour. What, what time did you say that was again, Tom? Uh, eight o'clock Eastern, seven Central. Gotcha. Um, so I'd love to have you guys join us. And, and then um, in the Facebook group, Shirt Lab Live, we will have um, Q&As with all the experts happening um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as well. So 
Cool. Um, hey, hey, Tom, real quick, do, do people need to go and sign up ahead of time or can they just show up or? Yes, to get the link um, into the virtual event, yeah. um, you've got to register at shirtlabsummit.com. So Perfect. once you get registered, we'll send you the link um, each morning um, to the summit, uh, basically to the event stage. And you'll be able to watch all the videos um, in there um, in the event room. And then the Facebook group will be separate for the Q&A. So once you get done with the video, if you've got questions you want to dive further, or if you just want to pick any of these experts' brains and you know answer any of those questions you're stuck on in your shop right now, uh, we'll be available in the Facebook group um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday all day. Fantastic. Cool. Awesome. All right, Tom, thank you so much and uh, looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for putting on a, uh, a great event and uh, appreciate all of your support of the industry. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Great. Thanks, Tom. See you, Tom. All right. That was that was awesome. I appreciate Tom uh, popping in. I know he's a, a, a busy guy. So uh, quick and succinct and uh, a lot of great information, as you said. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the other cool part about this, Terry, is, uh, you know, it, it, it's free. Now, here's the deal. If you want to, you know, be able to ha have access to these things for um, extended period of time uh, and, and whatnot, then uh, that's also available to you. You can you can buy a pass. And, uh, you know, so if you want to support the decorators community, they do have a, an affiliate program. So that's why I just popped that up at uh, AaronMontgomery.info forward slash shirt lab summit. Uh, and, and you can use that to uh, go and, and buy a pass to uh, have that information, I think, forever, if I remember correctly there. So uh, I think this is a, a long time. <laughs> it is a long time. There you go. So thank you, Eric. Um, Aaron Montgomery <laughs> info forward slash shirt labs summit to, to get there. And uh, so very much appreciate that support. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's close it out here, Terry. Um, we've, we've turned these shows from an hour into an hour and 30 minute shows now. So that's <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's happening here, though. Let's let's catch some of the things that Eric has coming up here. His uh, and, and the cool part about this. So Eric did demystifying next level digitizing. Um, a bit ago as a webinar and uh, people are still very interested in it. I just talked to a gentleman yesterday that uh, said, I finally had a chance to, to review it. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so it was a webinar that he did. Uh, it's now in recorded format, so you can still get access to it about better running, bolder, more beautiful embroidery with the faster cycle time from concept to completion. Uh, it was really cool. I had an opportunity myself to, to sit in and, and as people know, I am not an embroiderer, know very little about it, but uh, boy, I felt a lot smarter afterwards. So, you know, <laughs> it was worth it for sure. Uh, you can just talk, talk, not necessarily walk the walk, right? That's right. That's right. I, I can I can be dangerous now, though. So I, before I wasn't even dangerous, I was even in the conversation but uh, <laughs> uh if you want to check that out over at bitly bit.ly forward slash eric dd and that's eric with an h e r i c h d d uh and then eric has a great program going uh, and uh he's keeping it going so proud of him for uh making this happen and and uh putting in the work uh, you know he he puts in the work to make two rare guys happen and then he does his own work to make the take up happen every friday at 2 30 mountain time so that'd be 3 30 uh, eastern or no i'm sorry uh, 4 30 eastern and 3 30 central and uh, whatever time it is there in arizona no i'm just kidding 1 yeah. 30 in <laughs> on pacific in arizona time right now so you can catch that at facebook.com forward slash eric.campbell e-r-i-c-h dot campbell and uh if the i believe the information's correct eric give me the thumbs up if that's all good but uh yep okay i got the shaking of the head uh, today it's all about tools of digitizing shape creation and uh mark making in embroidery so uh should be a lot of good information again get over there and and get smart <laughs> so terry what about you what uh in terry's big book of non-travel there's still got to be some things in there, right? there there's a couple of things in here and uh, as of right now uh, my complete screen printing business course two-day weekend event workhorse products in phoenix august 22nd 23rd atlas screen supply in chicago september 19th and 20th 
all my upcoming 2020 classes and events. You can find it at terrycombs.com under the tab tour dates and always, always, always updating that, Aaron. It seems like every couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's pretty awesome that you're you're, you're on top of it, though. So I know, I know. You have some I, time to actually be on top of it. <laughs> I can no longer be your example of in uh, in your classes of how not to do your website. <laughs> I'll still find a way, Terry. Don't worry. <laughs> how about you, Aaron? What do you have going on? Uh, really uh, just kind of some cool things well, not coming up, but we just wrapped up a, uh, the five key series on, on business planning over at our success group.com. And uh, it was a smashing success. So if you missed it, you can just head over to the website and you become a member and, and get the training, uh, and other past classes that we've done plus uh, future classes coming up. So, uh, you know, we're just look, looking to add new members to the group at our success group.com. Uh, June 10th, the, the next training live training session is going to be on the new Facebook shop. So uh, Todd and I, and, and mainly Todd, he's leading this one, is going to be walking us through setting up our, our very own Facebook shop. So it's kind of a new thing that they've got very going cool. on over there to, to bring some e-commerce in right directly into the Facebook world. So uh, should be some really good information there. And and, and uh, once you go through that training, you'll be able to leave that and, and just go step by step into setting up your own own Facebook shop. So that uh, is going to be a, a great one. Um, the other thing that I'm excited and I wanted to make sure that people know about is our success tracker program. Uh, it's a great program that we put together over at our, our success group to get people started on achieving their goals. It's, um, it's basically, uh, it's a $20, uh, cost to you, or it's only a dollar if you're an OSG member, but for that 20 bucks, you are going to get pushed. Uh, you're going to get held accountable for reaching your goals. You're going to have cheerleaders. Um, Todd even said that he would get pom-poms, I believe. I, I'm putting words in his mouth, but <laughs> let's just stop there, Todd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just stop there. It's all um, we need. Just the pom-poms. <laughs> just the pom-poms. And uh, so, and then there'll, there'll be some other fun swag that you get along the way. So it's just, it's just a, a way to kind of help people. You know, w w our goal in our success group, is, and I'm looking at it because I've written it all over the, the walls here to, to remember, but it's to provide resources that empower over a thousand businesses to achieve their idea of success. And so we felt like this program was a great way to do that. You, you know, you're putting 20 bucks in, so you're putting some skin in the game to make sure that, you know what, in, tw in, in no more than 12 months, I'm going to reach this goal. So um, any goal you want to put in there, heck, if you want to put in there, you want to lose weight, we'll, we'll help you with that. It doesn't matter. Any, any success that we can help bring you, that's what we're all about. So you can check that out over at our success group.com forward slash ST for success tracker. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what's coming up for me. But uh, Terry, great show. Like I said, I'll put all of the notes, uh, including the stuff that we didn't get to in the show notes, because it's probably going to be several weeks before we can get to it. We have a, a full slate of folks all the way into uh, July right now with right. some really great stuff coming up. We've got Jason Rink going to be joining us, who was at ThreadX. The talking about stuff. We're going to talk social media. We're going to talk SEO. Uh, we've got another uh, women in garment decorating event coming up. We've got Eric next week. And uh, we'll, I'll talk about that more in a second. So Terry, let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> All right. Hey, we want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell. And uh, you can find him at ericcampbell.com and thank our awesome sponsor, Impressions Expo. Yes, indeed. We appreciate all their support and we appreciate all of the, the regulators joining us and, and participating today. Great information. Thank you so much. Um, as I mentioned, next week, we will be back with our show producer, Eric Campbell, and we're going to be talking about e-commerce again, uh, finding or fixing your e-commerce foundation. So uh, this is going to be really good information. Last week, uh, he brought a ton of fantastic stuff and uh, I know he's got more in store for us. So uh, in, in today's world, you got to know about e-commerce, even if you don't plan on actually having a, a site, which you should. But uh, yeah, that's next week. So there right. we go. We're looking All forward right. to that. Sounds good. And uh, 18 minutes into bonus time. Uh, until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.